basic MacBook Pro 14 inch might be one of the best devices ever made by Apple. If I'm being fully honest with myself, it's one of my favorite purchases that I've made from Apple in like the last five years or so. It is a powerhouse for productivity work and you see it in pretty much every single laptop setup video ever made on YouTube, pretty much all of them. It's very rare you don't see it. And that is for good reason. Like I said, it is an absolute powerhouse across the board at doing productive work. Things like working from home, if you're doing stuff like software engineering, or let's say you wanna run a YouTube channel, this laptop will easily do it no matter what. Now this video is gonna be a review on the MacBook Pro, but also I'm gonna give you a reason why I think that this is actually the best laptop for creative users. Across the board, I don't think there's really much competition. Yes, you could probably say the MacBook Air might be a little bit of competition for it if you want a more budget entry, but overall, I don't think anything compares in terms of the caliber for the price and just easy portability that you get with this laptop. So I think the best way of starting this is going to be talking about the specs of this device. Now, I'm not going to give you a full rundown of literally everything that you read off the Apple webpage because there's no point. A lot of people already know a lot of these things. I'll give you a very quick rundown on some basic information in a moment. But I think we need to start with the most impressive thing, in my opinion, with this device, which is the M1 Pro processor. Now, the M1 Pro chip is the best in its entire range, really. But what what makes it even better is the actual housing that it sits in. The device itself very much takes a liking to the chip. Obviously, by design, it's Apple Silicon, all of it's Apple made now, so everything runs really smoothly. However, one of the things that I actually do want to talk about is the reason why I really bought this device, which at the time was because my computer behind me was running really slow. The processor, when I was editing, literally would crash Adobe constantly. And as well as that, my 2018 MacBook Pro just wasn't cutting it. It was struggling to do the video edits that I needed to do, kept crashing. So I was like, you know what? I need to get a new device. And that is what I did. I went for this 14 inch MacBook and honestly, absurdly good for data transfer speeds, for video editing render times, for Lightroom rendering as well. Everything across the board, absurdly good. Photoshop usage, really easy to use. This thing completely destroys all of its competition across the board. There is nothing right now within the same caliber of device and that is as easy to use and sits so easily into a lot of people's ecosystems because a lot of people are Apple users. Now to give a little bit of perspective in terms of the power usage when I'm discussing that, uh, when I'm talking about that, I spent £1,600 on this laptop, which it does actually retail at £2,000. However, I got it on a deal and then I also work for a company, so I got an even better deal on top of it. So overall, I can't complain. I've spent a good amount of money on it, but I did spend two grand on the computer you can see behind me back in 2019, I believe it was. And that device, honestly, that was a great thing that I purchased. It was, it's just served me very well ever since. However, in terms of render speeds, it's atrocious uh, in comparison to this laptop anyway, which it, there is a reason for that. It's blatantly obvious. It is just the processor is not as good. However, it is an i7-8700 with 16 gigs of RAM and a 2070 graphics card versus my M1 Pro chip MacBook Pro. Now, if you were to take a guess of the difference in terms of speed for rendering a video, you might think to yourself, oh, maybe it's like half the speed. Uh, no, it's it's three to four to even up to ten times quicker, depending on the video. Some 10 minute videos, I've had this laptop render it out in a minute and a half, whereas my PC will take seven to 12 minutes to render out the same video. It's absurd. And then when it comes to the long form content over on my Exile channel, which is my gaming channel, I have long form videos, for example, like my Red Dead video that's three and a, well, three hours and 15 minutes long, it's about to say three and a half. That video took me to render out on my computer only about three and a half hours. However, on my MacBook, this is where it then differs. It took me just under two and a half hours, which may not sound like much, but considering the thing also hardly had the fans going. It's ridiculous. The fans are absurd on this thing, and as well the speed that it completely beats out my other computer is just stupid on so many different levels. Now the processor isn't the only actual great thing about this laptop, I've got to say that everything from the display, the build quality, the keyboard and the speakers that absolutely sound impeccable are amazing. However, I do think that one thing beats out everything else entirely, and that is the battery. Now for this video, I ended up running a battery health test to see how it was doing. 
and it's actually doing very well. It is sat at 100%, which is almost non-existent for Apple devices, like that is absurd. And I wasn't honestly overly surprised, as I answered this question in one of my videos about the MacBook Pro um, a couple of months ago over on my XR channel, where I was discussing this thing and someone asked me, hey, what's your battery health at? And I said, probably like 99, 98%, I'm guessing. I hadn't tested it at the time. And um, I, I honestly was thinking that because I haven't noticed a massive drop off in terms of the battery overall. There's nothing really that I'm surprised about. And then I saw there was at 100%. I was at least expecting like 1% to have gone. That's what happened with my iPhone. I lost 1% over an entire year, but it still felt like it was the same thing. This thing's battery is just on its own entire scale. It takes me about eight to 10 hours of active usage in a day to drain this thing from 100 to 0%. And when I say active usage, I'm talking video editing, photo editing, uh, thumbnail making, scripting, watching content, that sort of thing. So a load of different activities from basic consumption all the way through to actually higher power editing usage. So this thing completely smashes everything I've ever used out of the park. Everything from obviously tablets, they don't have massive amounts of batteries, a lot of my phones prior, uh, and as well as that, almost every single MacBook I've ever had previously, which I had a 2013 one and I had a 2018 one. So obviously, they are going to differ from that perspective, but also from any Windows laptops that I've ever tried out and also seen when I'm at work and I'm testing out different ones. They just have no comparison, even when they're not being used. It is ridiculous, but it also has great retention of its battery life. The same as what I mentioned with this tablet right here, which is the iPad mini, its actual retention of your battery is ridiculously good. The same way that with this device, it's actually just absurdly good as well. Now let's just get some of the other basic stuff out of the way for you. So for starters, this device has a 120Hz ProMotion display, just means that it's a very high quality display. 120Hz does look impeccable on this thing, however for the average user, you're not going to really pick up on it. You have a 1080p webcam as well, so that is one thing that is kind of cool. With the operating system upgrade as well, you can use your iPhone as a camera, so you can have that if you wanted. But one of the best things that actually has come from this new device is the added on better and just, you know, not added on or better, just giving us back our ports. We've now got HDMI port on this device. You've got three USB-C ports that can give you 6K displays, but also as well as that, you've then got an SD card slot, which is absolutely amazing for me. I need that because obviously video creation and photography, I need it all the time. But also when it comes to it, you also get a MagSafe charger and the jack port. So obviously jack port, everyone needs it for any form of video editing anyway but the MagSafe charger is actually a lot better than I was expecting and also you could drag that thing heavily and the laptop does not disconnect from its charger at all. You then end up also getting the better keyboard which honestly again you had butterfly keys I didn't have too much of a problem with them on my previous one I didn't honestly dislike the touch bar but obviously overall Apple have done their research and seen that people wanted a new keyboard or at least a older keyboard um, but also wanted to get rid of the touch bar for actual buttons buttons, which is fair enough. I honestly did enjoy the touch bar. I thought it was a nice sleek experience that made the laptop feel modern, but that's just me. But I've come to get really used to this device and I think the keyboard is actually really nice to type on. I prefer typing on this a lot of the time than any of my old prior keyboards that I had before the Keychron. And honestly, that's just because it feels great to type on. I don't know how to explain it. It just feels as if you aren't having to just like, you feel as if you're actually pressing a button versus the butterfly keys. There you go, that's the best way of describing it. You feel like you're actually pressing a button instead of just, you know, tapping something that feels like one of those felt type ones that you would get with an iPad, for example, back when they first released keyboards for the iPads. And then you also gain the amazing, just absurdly good speakers on this thing. I don't understand how it's been done, but they've been able to package inside of this tiny casing some of the best speakers that you're going to hear on a laptop. So if you want to even use this for general consumption, it will just absolutely smash anything you've ever had out of the park. Now I want to answer the actual primary question when it comes to buying this device and then also talk about the creative side of when I said that this is the best laptop for creatives, is who is this device for? Well obviously, it's a MacBook Pro, 
it's in the name, it's for professionals. I also would say it's for professionals and wannabe creatives. That's the best way of putting it. People who want to be a creative of some sort, for example myself, I would love to make video content creation my main thing. So I end up getting one because it helps me towards that goal. It helps me towards rendering out things without getting frustrated of it basically slowing down. It doesn't frustrate me when it comes to running anything really. I've never had it crash once, which is absurdly good considering it's been a whole year. But overall, I've got to say that this device is for people who are professionals. It is for the people who are there sat on their computer all day coding away. It's for the people sat there doing video editing all day, thumbnail designs, or let's say photo editing. It's for those sorts of people. So for people who are creative, it will absolutely smash everything you want to do out of the complete ballpark of anything close to it. However, I will say that do not be the person who does not need this and decides to buy it anyway. You don't need to. You probably don't even need the M2 MacBook Air. You could probably get away with a iPad Air, to be honest. Spend half the money and get a tablet instead. Yes, obviously you can't do everything you can do on a laptop, but personally, if I was a student, for example, unless it is something that requires a bit more power, if you're just doing things like Word docs, honestly, save yourself the money, get a MacBook Air, or get a case for an iPad Air. Those two options there will be a lot more budget friendly than this device, and you're actually being more realistic with your purchase. So yeah, with that all being said, I hope you guys did enjoy one of the first of five videos over on the Central Perspective channel. Like I said earlier, I do have a gaming channel called Exiled. That'll be down in the comment section, comment section, down in the description below. So if you do want to see that, make sure to go do so. But also I upload tech content on this channel and product content every single week so you can watch any of these first five videos if you're watching at the new year but also throughout the entire year I will be uploading every single week a form of tech or productivity content for you guys to watch so yeah if you guys did enjoy this video leave a like do subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one have a good one